All right, YouTube, so here is my first video and I'm gonna go and show my uh, compressor build that I did from scratch uh, using a compressor pump that I bought at Harbor Freight and the motor that I bought on the uh, Viewer uh, website. And so this unit is a uh, five horsepower uh, motor and the compressor is also rated for high five horsepower as well. And so to start, I bought myself a propane tank. This is a 60 gallon propane tank and this particular tank has two outlets uh, and I ended up using those two outlets. Uh, the uh, smaller one is three quarter pipe tread and the bigger one is one inch. And so for the smaller one, I'm using the uh, pressure valve. Uh, and then for the bigger one, that is my outlet. And so what I ended up doing is this base that is something I went to a local fabricator and they bent that for me. I ended up cutting the corners just like it's done on uh, new compressors. And then what I did here with the base is I am bolting it to the tank. And the reason I did that is so that if I ever wanted to switch tanks, uh, I could easily just unbolt the base and move that to a different tank on the if you buy a compressor of course they're always welded the bases and so yeah i wanted to be able to remove that if i ever wanted to and so here you can see how i did that i just took some flat iron uh drilled the holes bolted onto the base and then welded it onto the tank and then with my uh, motor mount here what i ended up doing is i created a base and bolted that base to the motor and then on the base I welded nuts um, onto the base and then here in the front I cut up uh, another two nuts and just welded them as well but they don't have the tread in it I, I drilled them out so that they are bigger so that these um, uh, bolt studs can slide in there and so now I have a very easy way of tightening the belt I just tighten these nuts here and that screws the uh, base uh, either forward or backward based on what I want whether I want to loosen up the belt or tighten it up and then just here I drilled a hole with a bolt so that once the belt is tight I just bolt it down so that it will not come loose uh, and then the uh, next step here is my uh, setup for the outlet so I just ended up using pipe for everything uh, here I use one of those couplings that can be undone. The reason I did that is so that I can easily remove this, the hole, the gauges and the switch and everything easily if I were wanted to do some maintenance on it. And so yeah, it's just a one inch tread converted to three quarter and then a T. And then here I have my pressure valve, adjustable pressure valve that can handle up to 140, 175 PSI. That's what the uh, compressor pump is rated for as well. And then here's my pressure switch. I don't have the cover on it. I'm actually gonna be replacing that for a, uh, a better one. Uh, this one is rated for 175 PSI, and the most it will do is 140, and then it kicks out. Uh, I bought this switch at uh, Princess Auto. Uh, that is in Canada. For those of you in the US or other parts of the world, uh, in the U.S., you have Harbor Freight, it's a similar store. Uh, again, the compressor uh, pump. Princess Auto didn't have this size pump that I wanted. They had a smaller one, but I wanted a bit bigger one. So that's why I went into the U.S. to buy it. And then my gauges, I bought them on Amazon. Uh, they're liquid filled, so very accurate. So here, on this side of the switch, I have my release valve. And then on this side, I just have the pipe in a in a 45 in or sorry a 90 elbow and then i'm uh, put in my my gauge to that and then here in the uh, adjustable pressure valve i put the uh, 90 in the back here and up and then i mounted my um, pressure gauge to that for the release valve when the compressor stops so that it releases the pressure from the 
uh, inlet pipe, I uh, use uh, a red uh, one quarter inch outside diameter um, pipe that I uh, bought. First, I bought one that was rated at um, 100 in, I think 200 PSI, which was a thinner one. And it couldn't even handle 100 PSI then it already popped. So I ended up um, returning that to Amazon, obviously it uh, did not um, meet the uh, or did not was not able to even get close to what it was rated for so this is a thicker uh, uh, tubing and so that tubing goes from my pressure valve uh, to the uh, bottom here to the inlet uh, pressure pressure valve and so that is working really well and then for the electrical uh, i wired up uh, the motor uh, here is the uh, wire coming from the motor to the switch. I soldered all of these terminals so that they would be solid. And then the top ones are the line in. So that is this wire here. And this is of course 220. So I have that in my uh, shop here. And for the pulley and belt, I used a website, which I will put in the description to calculate the pulley side so that this will turn at its appropriate uh, rated RPM. And so that I used a website to calculate the, uh, the pulley size, the distance also to buy the belt, did all of that. Uh, this pulley came from Princess Auto. For the inlet pipe, I was just gonna use a, uh, a half inch or three quarter um, to and then just bend it and so I attempted to do that and that did not work well uh, I needed a proper bender I bought a bender on Amazon and that didn't didn't even close to work it was a very cheap one so that didn't work and so then what I ended up doing I just ended up buying all these couplings here I also have one of these couplings that I can undo so that I can easily remove the compressor and then I just ended up soldering all of this so the inlet uh, outlet here is half an inch pipe tread and so then what I ended up doing is, uh, I, it, it, here it starts at half inch, and then here down here it gets, starts at um, um, three quarter inch for the um, uh, pipe. And so that goes into the, uh, again, the uh, uh, in, inlet pressure uh, valve. And then, so the reason I wanted this is so that I would have um, a bigger, a, a big enough compressor for sandblasting, just smaller, smaller stuff. Obviously, for doing a lot of sandblasting, I would probably need something even bigger. But this one has enough CFM uh, to be able to um, uh, use my small sandblaster that I also bought at Princess Auto. And then just quickly, I'll show off another compressor. This is also one I bought the same tank as I bought before which I was gonna be using for sandblasting, but it was too small. But here, what I did is it's just a tank and the uh, motor and compressor and the base that came off of a smaller um, a compressor tank that was all rusted out. So that tank was no longer good. So then all I did is I just uh, grinded the weldings off from the smaller tank and then ended up transplanting it out to this one. This one I ended up using one of the uh, uh, inlets for the propane tank. The other one I welded in because it did not, not line up with the, with the one that the tank came with. Um, so I ended up just putting welding in one of the uh, inlets and then welded shot the one inch uh, inlet. And uh, then for both of them, I just use, on the bottom I also welded in a uh, inlet, a quarter inch on both, both of these. And then I just used a, um, a hose a, uh, uh, hose that I um, connect to the center of the uh, tank and that comes out here. This way, if I want to relieve any moisture or water that accumulates at the bottom, I can just do that right from here on both of them uh, so that uh, I don't have to flip over the tank to do that. And so what I will end up doing with this one, I will probably end up selling it and this one, I will be uh, taking it back apart for sandblasting. We'll sandblast it all and paint it uh, black. So that is still remaining. And then the next step that I have to do, I have to build the guard. I already have the metal for that. So I'm gonna be uh, 
fabricating the, the guard so that it is uh, safe to use and when being nearby. Uh, this one, uh, this one has the guard from the uh, other compressor. This was actually purchased at Sears. I believe this is a compressor that would have been purchased in the 80s at Sears. And so I have the guard for this one. I haven't installed that yet. That was on the other tank as well. And so I will just add the guard to this as well. But yeah, that's the one thing that's remaining on this compressor. Uh, just doing the, the guard, fabricating the guard and sandblasting and painting it. And so that is my uh, approach to building my own compressor. Uh, would I do it again? Uh, probably not. It was uh, quite involved in, in a lot of trying to fit, uh, trying to make the fittings work and then going back and forth to the store to buy the right fittings. So not sure if I would do it again, but it was a fun project to do. I love making stuff like this. Um, uh, so that's uh, in my blood. So it was, uh, yeah, just a fun little project to do. And, and when it comes to fabricating stuff like this, um, yeah, I would make other things again. But in this case, it was a bit too long. That took me a bit long in too many trips to the store to try and find the right fitting and making it work. And then in terms of price, I think I probably have about um, $800 invested into this. So if I bought the same size compressor new with the same size five horsepower rated compressor pump in the motor, at Princess Auto I saw them for about $1,800 to up to $2,300, similar size, similar rating. So yeah, save some money, but uh, all the work, counting the hours, then I obviously I don't think I saved any money, but again, it was a fun, Fun little project to do, and uh, that's what really counts. Uh, I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. I'm very much a DIY um, type of guy to uh, do projects like this. So that is my little project. Thank you for watching.